Hi guys. Um, thanks for joining and thank you to UCC for having me tonight. Um, I'm going to be reading you some poems that I wrote um, during my year at UCC um, and I'm going to be reading them over some video I took um, that I think is going to work well with the poetry. And then I'm going to come back to you and talk a little bit about writing. So um, I hope you enjoy it and thanks again for coming. The Roost. Hornets turned a corner. The fear, the air. A surprise to every nest, a venomous April, following the longest march on record. Survival, shelter, bloodthirst. 45 bee crusts, twitch. Rhythmic honey flows in vain, coursing over verse. Presentiment. Munster's winter unfastening. Stillborn untruths. Portals of saline pre-sun. Banshees are screaming in concert, a breach of birds, a book, a psalm. Keep the wounds open, surprise no one with blood. By scab night, air is thinner. I finally hear, I'm finally here and understand the need for blackout sleep. Slanted rain, a wet brain, by darkness, a declaration. Don't be scared of ghosts, they have no business with you. All route would happen. Open your eyes by light of day, and I, across the Atlantic, must sleep. Hello. Upon the realization that you don't have a natural habitat. They come out after storms, letting flex, coiling Icarus's fault line. Suspension is God here, bold and encourageable, shimmering black screams atop the pews, ceremony, I am a party to. A murder of crows. I stop my alarm, filter a pick, wait for clicks. Freshly baited pigeons follow me on the way to school. All shadow play when you can be rebellion. Anyway, this simulation will cost you more than your life. The crow is barking up a storm at St. Finbar's this morning. It's about last night's row. Men are violence, he says. I can yell all night. Sunrise is pointless. The aim at dark, a distraction. And just like that, the day is gone. You brought the gulls. Four black males talk. They call it a murder. They act as though we don't honor our dead. They personify. A magpie out of frame, just one. Little blackbird watches on a perch shelter. Once I was mistaken for Raven, gifted bread by an American poet. A huff and off the church pew he chews, wry and shame. Crane Lane, last call. Know which parts of you he wants, what will be thrust, an open mouth, a gint tobacco, tarted lust, a likening, a scratched reel of this moment, and all the others you wanted a bold flash, discreet smolder. Reanimation. We'd have thawed a frastic, sketching lines of dialogue, canvassed affection. In the quell we call history, fidelity. We'd have learned to hate and hard swallow without this savor for when it was cryonic, ripe, technicolor, and fleeting. Birthday. I was lonely for a while this evening, listening to the crows caw as they returned home. Bobby Sands. The hue of 5 a.m. before June, upside down sleep, claws at 43 years, thin lashes between day and honesty, an expiry, a Christmas cake, you're called, across the water, out of date. It's funny how we need each other for future and holiday. What if, let's say, the hunger was all for nothing, deafening laughter? What if this is it and all we get under the tree? Drink before the war. The bells of St. Finbar off again. Five faint chimes and warring finches. 2.41 a.m. birdsong sculpts slim air. Rollers, tits, a fidgeting pigeon. Crashes, neck feathers, bobbing, 
weaving, warning. No one with roots doubled under can survive these days. I've tried, I've traveled, I'm tired. Maybe lyrebird or starling, define invasive species. Can't tell if it's a crow or my stomach. God protect me from her sensual coo. We are all drowned out. If you respect the dead and recall where they died, by this time tomorrow, there will be nowhere to walk. Katie Ford. I believe in ghosts, pray for hauntings. The road from grandmother's grave, clipped by terrified reforests. Kinder treks, pelting rain, salted fog ether. Hours 11 on I-95, careening coastline. Which lands aren't haunted? South Carolina is hailing orphaned babies. Who are the living? Five Points, 290 Broadway, Seneca Falls. New York, second only to Charleston, children sold at wet markets, screaming on the block. Here, there's a crying blue baby in Cove, but I can no longer hear near the sea. And I think I will read one more poem that's going to lead into um, sort of a visual poem that I've made. And it is called Candyman, after Kara Walker's Africant. A pollination dressed in bark parades into the show, unwilling. Retribution salts the soil, sprouting gourds of green lust to pinch at a girl's nose or bosom once blossomed. Stains, breath, inhaling a sugared song of your pain, creasing the hours that are yours, alone, awake. Oil increases. The whole answer is there on the canvas, Edward Hopper. A walk through the gallery, a history. Walker and Weem see too much. Interned wings, loud counter migration, to which I then need, prefer, the art of echo. That may be realism, a cozy invisibility. Picture me bussing in chop suey. Would I have been in the kitchen at Philly's? The darker brother, I too am America. Ours Americana, an etching of desolation. I can never put into a proper word. And I don't know, but like to think how he'd see straight through me if we ever didn't meet. Hey everyone, thank you for indulging my first adventure with iMovie. Um, it was actually kind of fun. Uh, and I am going to keep the graphic illustration stuff going as I run over some tips um, that I had mentioned to you before. And you'll see Sammy in the picture. He, uh, I ran these tips by him first and he approved, so we're good to go. Um, and the first one is don't compete. I can't stress this enough. Um, and I am a competitive person by nature. I know a lot of you are, but it's just it's it's pointless it doesn't make any sense it's like you know you're one person with your unique story and to, to, to sort of compete with people who have different stories and are coming from different places it's apples and oranges it just doesn't make sense um you know i've seen people who look like they were killing the game at like 20 who sort of disappeared and people who wrote their first book at 45 and you know their national book award finalists it's just that's how this works you don't you never know what's coming around the corner um and to be honest the people who i've seen succeed are the people who work the hardest that's that's just what it is um the people who just kind of don't give up and who are in it because they have things burning inside them to tell not people who are just in it to sort of bolster their resume um so you know just just keep going um and don't worry about you, you know like i find it so annoying these like 30 under 30 lists they drive me nuts because they're they they don't sort of respect the fact that we, we all come from different places you know and you know we all have access to different things and we certainly all don't start at the same you know starting line there is no such thing you know there's like socioeconomic factors and race and sex and you know there's just so many there, there's privilege that some of us have that other of us others don't have so you know screw that don't worry about that it's time wasted um you know just do what you need to do and don't worry about um you know where your your place in comparison to somebody else's 
Um, and the second thing is to be patient with yourself. Um, you know, I think that this pandemic has sort of really taught us all that like, you know, there are times our brain's just going to shut down. Um, and that there's sort of a natural ebb and flow, um, that you have to sort of like, um, respect, uh, to how your body and your brain works. You know, I know for me, I realized, um, looking back that there have been years where, you know, it's more input than output, meaning that like, you know, there's times that I just like read like a ton, you know, watch a ton of movies, take in a ton of information and I don't really feel like producing work. And then like, you know, after that, the work flows and you know what I mean? Like, so it's not like this sort of like, you know, some people work really well with like this set, like I'm going to write a thousand words, you know, every week. And uh, you know, this is my schedule and that works for some people, but that doesn't work for me and it might not work for you. You know, there are times where, you know, I may not write anything for like months, you know, and then it just like, kind of like flows, you know, and I can't stop it. Um, and you know, you just have to figure out what works for you. You know, it's like sort of trial and error, um, and, you know, just kind of like listen to yourself and listen to your body and, you know, just be patient. Um, it, you know, if I think that we're always working, even when we don't know we're working, you know, like, like I said, like I could literally be watching Vanderpump rules, you know, all day. Um, and my brain is still making connections, um, you know, to sort of work that I'm doing or something that I want to say that I'm not even aware of, you know, um, and I'm not advocating, you know, spending a month watching Vanderpump Pump Rules, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, also just like chill out, you know, let your brain sort of rest and, um, you know, just, just listen to your body. And the third tip is to understand that there's a finite amount of energy that we all have. And, you know, if you waste your energy being jealous of other people, competing with other people, um, you know, sort of guilting yourself that you're not writing enough, well, guess what? That's energy that you don't have to actually write. Um, and so, you know, just, I guess, try to just calm the noise um, and focus on the work. That's, you know, the best advice I can give. Um, and I'm, believe me, I'm not really good at following <laughs> any of this advice sometimes, you know, because we're all human. But, um, you know, if you can just sort of um, focus on what you're doing and sort of block out, you know, the outside world, um, I think the, your writing and your writing world will benefit. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys.